Hello Dr. Humans, welcome back to the channel and to today's video where we are going to demystify the concept of tea and toast hyponatremia for the actual win. It's going to be so much fun. Now if you have found hyponatremia to be a nemesis topic along your doctor journey, you are not alone. And I've recently cracked the code to teaching this topic so you can actually understand it. And so if you want to get your hands on that tutorial, then this is available inside the Reno for the Written program, which you can now unlock on our new monthly subscription over on the website. It's all very exciting. It's an absolute blast. And I'll leave a link to that below. But today we are going to unpack the mechanism of tea and toast hyponatremia because it's not intuitive and yet it's so much fun to actually understand it. So you're probably aware that there are a group of patients who rock up on the gen med ward from time to time who are malnourished but hydrating well and they have hyponatremia. It might be a tea and toast hyponatremia where usually you have a wee old person who's literally just drinking tea and having toast and not much else in their diet. But the same concept applies to people who are abusing alcohol, particularly those who are drinking a lot of beer, but aren't really nourishing themselves otherwise. So these two groups of people are at risk of hyponatremia for the same reasons. And the reason this happens is fascinating. This happens because they're so malnourished that they don't have enough solute in their urine to entice water to leave the body. And so the water comes back into the body, leading to too much water in the bloodstream and diluting down that serum sodium concentration. Let me show you. So in the kidney, in the collecting duct, we have the urinary space and the interstitium. And in the interstitium, there are lots of solutes deliberately placed there, trying to entice water back into the body from the urine. And water is magnetized to this solute. It simply cannot resist. And so here, water in the collecting duct will move towards the solute in the interstitium via water channels known as aquaporins along its concentration gradient. But what's also true is that in a person with a normal diet, we also have some solute in the urinary space, which will keep this concentration gradient in check, holding some of that water back in the urine. And this is good, right? We only want to take in the water that we actually need, nothing less and nothing more. And so the solute in the urine helps us to maintain that balance. And the solute in the urine comes from our diet and of particular importance is protein because protein in our diet is metabolized in the liver to urea. And urea is a key player in the interstitium but it also is a key player in the urinary space. And of course, there are various other salts in the urine too. So nutrition, including protein intake, is important to ensure that we have a healthy amount of solute in our urine. But in people with tea and toast or beer drinking hyponatremia, they don't eat a lot of protein. And so when water gets to their collecting duct, the situation is that they have lots of fluid in the urine but not a lot of solute to hold the water there. So when water sees that juicy concentration gradient in the interstitium, it will move towards it enthusiastically and come back into the body. So now there's more water coming back into the body than is normal or required. This extra water in the bloodstream is going to dilute the blood and the sodium concentration will fall. And you can clinch this diagnosis based on history and excluding other causes of hyponatremia in the usual way, which we fully explore inside that sodium tutorial that I mentioned earlier. So be sure to check that out. But of course, even if you don't check that out, there are some really handy algorithms you can find on Google to help you work through those sodium problems using those osmolarities and your clinical skills and all the things. So I'm not going to go into that in today's video, but you might be wondering, how is this different from SIADH? How would you tell those apart? And you absolutely can tell them apart. You can delineate them. But what's fun is that you don't really have to. They are both treated in the same way. Both of these involve too much water coming back into the body. In SIADH, it's because ADH has gone rogue, it's out of control, and it's placing too many aquaporins here in the collecting duct, so too much water is coming back in. Whilst in tea and toast hyponatremia, the ADH is completely fine. The amount of aquaporins is completely normal. 
but there's all this water coming back in because water is not being held in the urinary space by urine solutes. But regardless, because both of these involve too much water coming back into the body, fluid restriction is going to be helpful. And in T and Toes hyponatremia, they also benefit from a dietitian coming along to increase that protein in their diet. That will absolutely help. And so although you don't really need to be able to tell them apart to make things better for the patient, if you wanted to get real technical about it, the answer is in the urine versus the serum osmolalities. Let's go there. Osmolality meaning the solute over the water in a solution. It's just a ratio. In SIADH, there's too much water coming back into the plasma, whilst the urine will be more concentrated, right? Because we've sucked all the water out of it. So serum osmolality is going to be less than urine osmolality. But in tea and toast situations, there is too much water coming back into the plasma because the urine doesn't have a lot of solutes in it. And so here, the urine osmolality is less than the serum osmolality. Too easy. And because we know the actual mechanisms, we can work this out from first principles. And that is also satisfying. And something else that will make so much sense is the use of salt tablets or urea tablets in the treatment of hyponatremia. The whole idea here is to increase the amount of solute in the urine to draw water out of the body. It's all coming together. How cool is that? And again, you can use this in either situation. You can use salt tablets and urea tablets in someone with SIADH, or you can use it in someone with T and toast hyponatremia, right? Both of those situations will benefit from more solute in the urine, drawing that water out of the body. So too easy, but now you know why you're putting it on the drug chart. So that was tea and toast hyponatremia. Thank you so much for joining me. And of course, if you do want to get your hands on that sodium tutorial in full, then head on over to our website and join our brand new monthly membership. It's complex made simple and it will save you so much time compared to learning these tricky topics in the usual ways. And I would love to see you there. And otherwise, stay tuned here on YouTube for some more high you learning. Bye.